Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and welcome to another edition of Hilal Live. My name is Lukman Shadrach from the Cape Town studios. Thanks for watching us on channel 347 on DSTV. And as we do with uh, Hilal Live, we bring you current topics that are affecting our community. And one such topic is the topic of diabetes that we all dread to one day hopefully not get. Uh, but at the same time, it's something that's so rife in our community as well. So I thought I'd best invite a guest that is very knowledgeable in this topic and uh, also well known in the Cape Town community as well. I'd like to uh, welcome Brother Siraj Ali. Assalamu alaikum Siraj. Assalamu alaikum salam Luqman. Shukran so much for allowing us uh, your time and your expertise on the show. A very important topic, diabetes. You've been an optometrist. Uh, in that field, I would imagine that you've explored so much and researched uh, quite a bit about diabetes. So when we look at the topic of diabetes, maybe break it down for our viewers. What exactly are we talking about when we refer to diabetes? Okay, yeah. Um, I'm very passionate about diabetes. Um, it affects a huge part of our community. Um, so Diabetes is, I'm going to try to be, to keep it as simple as possible. Okay, perfect. Diabetes is when your blood sugar levels are too high. Mm, mm. And um, to give you an idea of how this occurs, I'm going to give you a slide mm -hmm. um, which shows that Essentially, when food gets broken down, mm -hmm. it gets broken down into carbohydrates. Mm -hmm. And carbohydrates, in turn, gets broken down into glucose. Okay. And glucose is the end product of carbohydrates. Okay. And this eventually has to find its way into the cell. Right. And it does this by means of insulin. Okay. So... Glucose is our main source of energy. Our body can make its own glucose, mm -hmm. but a huge portion of our glucose comes from food. Ah, okay. And they say what we, we are what we eat. We are what we eat, yes. Yeah. Um, so the other component in diabetes is insulin. Okay. Right. Insulin is a hormone that is made by the pancreas. Okay. Um, in diabetes, we either have no insulin mm -hmm. or we don't make enough insulin. I see. And sometimes we do have enough insulin, mm -hmm. but the cells in the body cannot detect it. Uh, okay, so, so that's where people who then have diabetes need to have an injection worth of insulin yes, yeah. to stimulate that. I'm okay. not going to go into the different types of diabetes. Sure. Uh, so this is just doing a little bit of a sketchy idea of diabetes. Perfect. Um, so because the blood sugar levels are high in, in our, our blood, mm -hmm. this results in the walls of the blood vessels getting damaged. Okay. So this okay. essentially is why Diabetes is such a dangerous disease. I get you. And as a result of that, it will have certain consequences. Mm, mm, this mm. damage that is done to the blood vessel. Mm. And my talk will basically try to enlighten our community that you need to understand diabetes mm. to manage it better. Of course. What is the current statistics? Uh, in South Africa when it comes to diabetes. I know we often see viral videos and we often see, you know, viral posts about the state of diabetes around the world. But here in South Africa, what is our, our, our statistics? Okay. Um, what is incredible about diabetes is that it is the second leading cause of death mm. in South Africa. Sure. Behind tuberculosis. Wow. So... You can see it's, it's, it's a fairly, fairly serious disease. Mm -hmm. uh, the prevalence in diabetes in South Africa is up about 11.3%. Sure. That's quite high. That is very high. And, and what that means is nearly one in, in fact, a little bit more than one in 10 people are diabetic. Wow. 
And this stats is the highest in Africa. <laughs> we have an estimated 4.5 million people that are diabetic. Mm -hmm. And the surprising thing is that more than 50% of them are undiagnosed. Wow, that's a, that's a very worrying stat. It is extremely worrying because it means you could be sitting with being diabetic and not knowing it. Of course. And that is why what I'm going to talk about later is some of the symptoms and signs. Um, very interestingly, um, you could in fact be diabetic yourself, mm -hmm. you know. So you mentioned high blood sugar levels, right? What are the consequences, Siraj, of the high blood sugar levels? Okay. So when the sugar levels are high in the blood, it affects the walls of your blood vessels. Okay. And ultimately, the walls that get affected are the very tiny one, the mm. tiny blood vessels. Okay. And the question is, where do you find these tiny blood vessels? Right. Mm. So in the eye, you find them. There's five areas. Okay. You find them in the eye, you find them in your brain, mm -hmm. you find them in your heart, and you find them in your kidneys, sure. and you find them right in your feet. I see. And these will have consequences. In the eye, it leads to a condition called diabetic retinopathy. Okay. Uh, the back part of the eye is called the retina. So when these blood vessels get affected, it affects the, the vision. Mm -hmm. And in fact, uh, we know as an optometrist, we know that diabetic retinopathy can lead to blindness. Right, right. If it happens in the brain, which is out, outside my field, it causes a stroke. Okay. And we've all heard of that too. Yes. And in the heart, it causes a heart attack. In the kidney, it leads to kidney damage and eventually dialysis. Mm. And in the feet, if you get infections there, uh, which can lead to gangrene, ultimately it leads to amputation. Mm. So these are the drastic consequences of diabetes. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah. Later on, we're going to chat about it doesn't have to be so bad. Mm. So, so when we look at these five areas that you spoke about as well, will every diabetic actually go down this route? Will all of them either experience one or the other? No. Okay. Certainly not. Okay. And that is why this is important, what I'm going to be saying, is that it is a lifestyle disease, mm -hmm. which means that if you conduct good diet mm -hmm. and exercise, mm -hmm. um, you can eliminate this disease okay. and you can live a normal life. And I think um, I've mentioned all the fearful stuff, but being diabetic does not have to be bad. I see. You know? Okay. So how does high blood sugar level affect our eyes? You being an optometrist, I would imagine this is where your field My of expertise, expertise comes in. Come. Absolutely. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to firstly give you the normal eye mechanism mm -hmm. of how our eyes work. Okay. And that is, imagine we have light entering the eye. Okay. It goes through the lens mm -hmm. and then it gets focused onto the back part of the eye called the retina. Mm -hmm. This light then gets converted into an electrical signal. Okay. And that signal via our nerves goes to our brain. Okay. The brain then processes it as the images that we see. Okay. So for the eyes to stay healthy, the different parts of the eye to, to be healthy, it needs oxygen and nutrients. Okay. And this is supplied by the blood vessels. Gotcha. So that is why our blood vessels need to remain healthy. Mm, mm, and mm. what diabetes do, it makes it almost unhealthy. Gotcha. So in the eye, the early stages, um, when we have damage done to the retina, 
we call it a condition called diabetic retinopathy. Okay. So in the early stages of diabetic retinopathy, um, there are the blood vessels tend to swell, mm -hmm. and you can also get some leakages happening. Sure. Yeah. And in the later stages, some of these blood vessels can actually become blocked. Okay. And that's now towards the end stage, mm -hmm. and that's bad news. Yeah, and that's going to be quite difficult to reverse the process, I would imagine. Yes, uh, there are different ways to try to prevent it from getting worse, but hopefully uh, we, we're going to talk a little bit more about uh, diabetic retinopathy mm -hmm. um, as, we go on. as we go on again. Right. The second aspect regarding the eye is something called blurred vision. Mm. And in diabetes, we get what is called fluctuating vision, okay. blurred vision. Right. Um, so what is blurred vision? Blurred vision is when there's a loss of sharpness of the vision okay. and um, the inability to see fine details. Okay. So blurred vision generally occurs quite often in our lives. Mm, mm. One is if you're on the computer a lot, mm. you'll get blurred vision. Okay. If you are short-sighted, mm. you get blurred vision. If you are far-sighted, you get blurred vision. However, blurred vision is a common warning sign in diabetes. Okay. So when you get what we term fluctuating vision, where the vision improves and worsens for a period of time. This is worrying, mm. right? And why does this happen? Why does the vision fluctuate? Now we have a structure on the front part of the eye called the lens. Mm -hmm. uh, when the blood sugar levels are high, then that area in front of the lens, which is called the, the aqueous, um, has a lot of glucose and what happens to that glucose, that glucose enters into the lens mm. and as a result the lens tends to to swell. I get you. So okay. when the lens swells that causes the vision to become blurry. I see. We're going to take a very short ad break. When we come back, we're going to continue on this topic. We're chatting to Siraj Ali, who is a well-known optometrist in the Cape Town area, and chatting about a worrying uh, illness, diabetes, and how it affects our eyes. Do join us after the break. Assalamu alaikum and uh, welcome back to uh, Hilal Live. Uh, in studio, we're chatting to Siraj Ali, who is an optometrist, and we're chatting about diabetes. Siraj, thanks once again for coming into the studio. Thanks. Before the break, we spoke about blurred vision. Yeah. And I know there's pertinent information that you would like to share with our viewers. Yes, uh, we were talking about fluctuating vision that happens in the diabetic. Mm -hmm. This is very important for us in, in our practices. Um, so one of the problems with if the blood sugar levels is high, mm -hmm. and we said that uh, the lens swells and that causes the vision to blur. So if you come for an eye test mm -hmm. and your blood sugar levels are high, right. then we will get a result mm -hmm. and the result will be correct for that particular day. Mm. Not knowing if your blood sugar levels are high, we will give you a pair of spectacles. When your sugar level goes back to normal, mm. Mm -hmm. you won't be able to see with those specs. Wow. Okay. So this is why often when we know the diabetic is not well controlled, mm -hmm. we often have to give more than one eye test. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the extreme of this, and you know, we often speak about it, we hear about it, we it plagues our community, is, is cataracts and, and more importantly, um, glaucoma. Uh, yeah. with diabetic patients. Okay, yeah, so this is one of the aspects that is totally related to diabet diabetes. Okay. Um, we find most people can get, anybody can get cataracts, but a diabetic will get a cataract faster okay. and at a younger age. Oh, wow. Right? 
So I'll, I'll first explain to you what a cataract Please. is. Um, inside the eye, we have something called the lens. Mm -hmm. The lens is responsible for focusing light at the back part of the eye. So what happens is in a cataract, the lens loses its clarity. Oh, okay. And becomes cloudy. Okay. So this prevents light from going properly into the to the eye. Okay. So that essentially is, and to give you another simple example, um, I often tell patients that it's almost like a bathroom mirror, mm -hmm. that before you have a shower, you see your image clearly. Mm. After the shower, you, the reflection is hazy and the outline is visible, it's not so visible. Okay. Um, that essentially is what a cataract is. Okay, I got you. And then we've got the other part, which is glaucoma. Yeah. Uh, just one other thing about the, sorry, uh, no the problem. Man, about the cataract is, uh, the cataract is often removed by an ophthalmologist. I see. Right? So um, it, it's very important in a diabetic to have the cataract removed because remember, in a diabetic, we can get damage on the lens, mm -hmm. which, uh, which affects the vision. And we can get damage on the retina, oh, wow. which results in diabetic retinopathy. Right. So the sad news is if you have got a cataract as well as diabetic retinopathy, mm. even though you might have the cataract removed, mm. you may still pick the up vision the alternative. Will still sure. not be good, you know? Much. So this is why people are sometimes fearful of having a cataract operation because some colleague or friend had was un unsuccessful in the mm, operation. I get you. Yeah. I'm with you. With regard to glaucoma, glaucoma is very prevalent in uh, diabetes. Um, glaucoma is essentially when uh, the pressure in the eye is too high mm -hmm. and glaucoma affects your nerves and blood vessels. And if a family member has glaucoma, make sure the optometrist is informed okay. uh, because it can be hereditary too. Okay, fantastic. All right, so now that we have all this information, Siraj, we know that high blood sugar levels are damaging you know, to our body. Yeah. How can we decrease or maybe prevent um, this from damaging our bodies even further or even happening um, to us in future? Okay, so this is an aspect that I'm very passionate about. Okay. Uh, because for me, um, the solutions are what makes life worthwhile living. Brilliant. So for me, diabetes is not such a bad thing. Okay. So why do I say that? Because exercise, one, one of the most important aspects for, di for the diabetic is to exercise. Okay. And I say this because exercise has pro been proven scientifically to be beneficial to the diabetic. Brilliant. Uh, a, a major study that was done on 3,000 diabetics, mm -hmm. active ones, mm -hmm. against 3,000 non-active diabetics. Okay. They did a three-year study and they found that the active group had 40% less blood vessel damage. I see. So it's a no-brainer not to exercise. Okay. From the same study, they showed that ideally, mm -hmm you should try to do at least 150 minutes per week. Okay. Moderate to intense exercise. If you do that, mm. I can guarantee to you that your diabetes will be well taken care of. Brilliant. So um, another aspect, not everyone wants to do exercise as in gymming, um, walking. Mm. Fine, if you go into your malls and you see an escalator and a pair of stairs, mm -hmm. use the stairs. Gotcha. Whenever you're needing to do small errands, do your walking. Mm. I make a promise to my dog and take it for a 15-minute walk every day. Brilliant. And so that creates a happy situation. Mm. Um, the other aspect of decreasing blood sugar levels is to try to manage your your carbs okay very important uh, yeah um, one of the ways of doing it is 
um, to ensure that you control the amount of carbs that you take in mm -hmm. and also just planning your meals. Okay. Um, there is a table that I'm going to show you. Mm -hmm. um, it's called the, the nutritional information table. Mm -hmm. Very, very important. And if there's something you, I would like my, our listeners to have learned from is the next time you go to the supermarket, mm -hmm. understand this particular table that I'm going to show you now. Okay, great. And the reason why I'm saying that is because um, each and every product in your supermarket mm -hmm has got this particular table. Information on there. Whether it is cool drinks or sweets or whatever you have in your... Uh, and I think a lot of people just overlook that table. Mm -hmm. The table... So the table uh, breaks down food into protein, carbohydrates, and fats. Okay. What we are interested in as diabetics is that the amount of sugar that is in your carbohydrates. Okay. So if you look under the 100 ml column, mm -hmm. if that is under 5 grams, mm. then as a diabetic, you're good. Okay. If it is more than 5 grams, then mm. it will spike your sugar. Okay, gotcha. So that, that particular example shows you about cool drinks, which, we, which a lot of people like. Mm -hmm. um, and if you look at a low sugar cool drink, you'll see that the amount of sugar is less than 0.5 grams, okay. which is low. Absolutely. And if you look at a normal cool drink, and I'm not going to mention names, mm -hmm. I mean, we, there are some very popular ones. Yeah. Um, and you can see the amount of sugar is 12.5 grams, sure. which That's is a lot. way higher. Wow. Um, Another aspect that can decrease your sugar levels is something called fiber. Okay. Right? So the more fiber you have, the better it is. It's because fiber in your body, when you eat it, it lowers the absorption of carbohydrates. Okay. Okay. So thanks very much. I think that informs us quite a bit in terms of that table. We often ignore it. We see it and we ignore it as well. I speak for myself first. But when it comes to blood sugar levels, Siraj, okay, how can, uh, can, can you maybe list some of the factors that can decrease our blood sugar levels? Okay. Again, this is critically important, um, something that I'm also very passionate about. Um, uh, on the table, um, there is drinking water. Of course, yes. Um, a study has shown that people that drink water more often have a far better chance of lowering their blood sugar levels. Okay. Right? So that's proven. Mm. So water is best. Um, try to eat moderate portions. Mm -hmm. Portion control is very important. So, because that also helps your weight. Right. And in, in, also in effect, it will help you prevention of diabetes. Mm, okay, that's very good. Um, and then manage your stress. Mm. People often don't realize uh, that stress is an important component in diabetes. How does stress uh, increase your sugar? I'll give a simple explanation, and that is... We know that stress causes the release of the hormone called cortisol. Okay. Cortisol then from the brain goes to your liver. It instructs the liver to change glycogen to glucose. Mm, okay. so it, it, it causes the release of glycogen. And glycogen then gets broken down into glucose and up goes your sugar. Okay. In a normal person, we need that because with stress, we need more energy. <laughs> so, but in a diabetics, it's obviously not good. Yeah. So, a diabetic, the less stress they have, the better it is for them. We've got about a minute left on the show, Siraj. So, very quickly before we round up, okay, okay. one of the most uh, important questions is why is it so necessary to monitor our blood sugar levels? Um, because any spikes. Um, in sugar uh, will cause damage to your blood. Uh, so if you, if you monitor it, 
then you have an idea that um, how to how to balance it. Gotcha. Right. Okay. So I often find uh, you know the sad part is uh, the machines are a bit expensive, and mm. I often find patients saying when I ask them when last did you monitor your blood, but they say no only when I go to the day hospital. Mm. So by you knowing and being in control and taking your sugar levels every morning before breakfast, you have an idea of how to. And manage. I often tell patients, you know, Sunday, I'm a bit naughty. Right. So Monday morning, I'm, I make sure I take my sugar because if my sugar is high, mm. I can take corrective action. Gotcha. That's really what it is. Suraj, thank you so much for coming into studio. We, this is going to be a series we're going to do over the next couple of weeks. And we're going to rehash some of these important questions and some okay. of the other important questions when it comes to looking after your eye and how it affects our body and the amount of food that we, and type of food that we put into our Absolutely. body as well. Thank you once again. I appreciate <laughs> Lovely. it. Thank you, Lukman. And that's Siraj Ali, optometrist, uh, educating us on a very important topic today, diabetes. Uh, we're going to take an ad break. When we come back, do join us for Hilal Live.